because you need to keep this environment absolutely straight. There is a, there's a, there is a journal called Tissue Barriers, which I read. And, you, know, you can imagine it's a real page turn. <laughs> and, and, and I can't remember the exact quote, but it's like, you know, all, all material must pass through endothelial cells because if they could pass between, you know, the, the, the barrier, the endothelial barrier, they could pass between um, cells and cell membranes, we would immediately be dead. It's a prerequisite for life that things cannot pass between cells. It's an absolute prerequisite. Now, it does get more complicated at a very micro level where within your kidneys and your, your liver, things obviously have to come out and inside cells because otherwise none of these organs would work. But that's happening at a very small level. The larger size level of all the blood vessels where this happens, you can't get anything through an endothelial cell and you can't get anything past an endothelial cell. It is, I hate to use the word impossible in science because someone will come along and show, you know, However, it is as close to being an impossible thing as, as there can be. And yet and that, is the, that is the mechanism by which cholesterol, a.k.a. LDL, is supposed to cause thickenings in your arteries. And that neither of these processes, neither of these things can happen. It's impossible for it to happen. So you have an impossible hypothesis. Yeah, the triglycerides that come in, the fats you eat, and I found it quite stunning at the time, what I was learning in the first days, right? But the triglycerides that are three fatty acids with a glycerol backbone, so think of it like a fork, triglycerides, they come in in the fat, they get broken up into single monoglycerides, right? They then get brought across and they get packaged back into triglyceride on the other side in your body and into chylomicrons. Well, yeah, well, well of course, you know that in order to absorb that, then they bile that comes out of your gallbladder is basically cholesterol. Yeah. And so uh, one, one, one molecule of fat attaches to one molecule of cholesterol to form a cholesterol ester. And then that's absorbed. Then it's packaged into a big thing called a chylomicron. And then that big thing, which is like much bigger than an LDL or whatever, travels straight from your gut, straight into your bloodstream. It doesn't go through your liver and distributes <laughs> the fats uh, all around your body, which are then reconverted this is what they call the futile cycle, where these triglycerides are broken down into yeah. individual uh, fatty acids and reconstructed. And it's just, I mean, your body's just doing these like, what? How is that happening? And then, so of course, the fat that you eat, any fat that you eat does not actually go into your liver at any point, a well, very, very yeah. tiny amount. The fat that's in your liver is actually made from carbohydrates or sugars. So, so the irony is, <laughs> I mean, it's like, it, do you not even know these things? I mean, people just don't even know these things. It's amazing, isn't it? So the fat you eat ends up in a big, bloody great thing called a kind of micron that travels around losing losing all its fat until it's, it's shrunk from the size of a basketball to the size of a golf ball. And then the liver says, well, I'll have that then. Incorporates it in, breaks it down, does what it does with it. But if you eat carbohydrates, the, the, whatever the carbohydrate sugars, they're turned into simple sugars, go to your liver. The liver thinks, I've got too many of these kicking around. The only thing I can do is convert them into fats, fatty acids, stick them into a thing called, a, which we call a triglyceride, which is a VLDL, transport them out of the liver, where they then travel around the body losing their fats, and then come back to the liver as an LDL, and the liver says, right, I'll have that back again. I mean, one of the fascinating things was David Diamond told me this, and uh, I presumed it was true, but I've never seen it proof. If you have people, young children who've got really severe raised cholesterol called homozygous familiar hypercholesterolemia and their cholesterol levels, LDL levels can be 60 when they're normally three. Now this does cause problems because your blood's like goo, if you like. Um, mm. And anyway, if you do a liver transplant on these children, their LDL level straight back to normal. 